I already to become legendary. When I started playing last epic, it was pretty hard journey to start, because all guides I saw in internet was basically a reading of descriptions in a game. And I definitely can press on guide button myself and read what's going on in forging and what I really like button do. So if you are still new to the game and don't know how to start and become really cool and powerful character, then this guide is for you. It will be completely step by step guide on what you need to do in last epoch and how to do everything. And let's start from complete beginning. And that's of course creating your character. And when you're creating character, you already will be prompted with cycle or legacy type. Cycle is basically season, and after each season, your character will be transported to legacy mode. So for new season, you need to create a new character if you want to compete with others in leaderboards and other stuff, but legacy will have all the same stuff that is in cycle mode, if not stated otherwise in some maybe like patch notes and other stuff, but right now it's completely same modes. So there is no reason to create legacy character if you're new to the game and want to play last big epoch for the first time. Now we got characters creation. And you probably like have question which is like most powerful character in last epoch. The truth is there are some characters who are more powerful than others and can push to the higher difficulties. But overall every character is viable and can be played. So if you don't know how much time you want to give to last epoch then definitely go to each character and look on their key skills check out what you like what you want to use and then just get this character but if you're serious and you want to push to the high difficulties and get best gear in the game then as first character i recommend getting character who can fast farm i got google tables with all builds that is viable and best fast farming builds in my opinion right now it will be a rogue and especially blade dancer rogue and also it will be a collide with leech or warlock mastery so for today's video i will start with a rogue and yeah about masteries basically you will pick your class but every class got three additional classes that you will unlock on your journey i will explain later because it's step by step guide but right now you just uh, want to press on these masteries and decide maybe you want to go into falconer tree and have falconry skill that will give you falcon that fights with you or you want to be a blade dancer and use daggers and swords or you want to use bow so you will go into marksman tree and will be able to use arrow storm or hail of arrows today i will be making blade dancer because blade dancer is really super fast farming class let's name our character and let's go if you want to challenge yourself, you can even pick hardcore mode, because there is no penalty for it, unlike other games like Diablo, for example. If your character dies in Diablo, it will be deleted, just unplayable. Here you can start with hardcore mode, if you die once, this character will be resurrected in normal mode and you can continue playing him as normal character. There's some challenges, if you're a beginner, don't press on it, there's no point, and let's go. So here we are, starting in a forest area. You move your character with left click or on controller, it's totally like supported, but I will talk about mouse and other buttons. So we got our health, we got our mana, it's like super simple stuff, we get potions, we can pick them up and potions will be on our belt. So now we can have only two potions, with better belts we can have more potions. And we got five abilities, four abilities over here and also on the right click. Right now it's attack, but we unlock more skills later. And if you wish to set up your skills, basically you le just left click them and decide which ability you want to have on each button. You can even have uh, one ability on all buttons and <laughs> no matter what button you press, this ability will be used. Right now don't worry about anything else, just go straight down the road, you will see some monsters, use your abilities and destroy them. It doesn't matter what class you play, it's a very easy part of the game. You will definitely have ability to destroy these monsters. And on your road you will see this first guy. Also you will see minimap. Minimap can be extended on your screen with tap button. So right now it's on the screen, but it's hard to see. So I like it in the right corner. And there's this yellow stuff over here. Yellow means main story line. So we want to talk with him. If you're speedrunning you don't even need to do it, but just in case now you understand how to find your quests. 
And also there will be this yellow pointer on the map. It will show where you need to go to get to your quest location. So in case you're missing and don't know where to go, just look on the minimap. So right now I need to go to the top right corner of the map somehow. Also, if you're not playing hardcore, actually you shouldn't worry about your life. And even if you die, that's not a big of a deal. In this game you're not losing any experience or even just like power of your armor and other stuff. In reality, these monsters even can't kill you, as you can see, with our basic endurance for this class, we can't die to these monsters, so you kinda can do, like, whatever you wish. But if you die, you will just resurrect, so it's completely fine. I didn't know, but most of the time, I always got the short bow drop over here and instantly equipping it, so now I will be using bow, and I guess it's, like, most fast way to go through the campaign at first with a ranged weapon. Fury scale is really nice, so you just destroy these mobs really fast. And this orange bar at the bottom part of the screen is your experience. When it will be filled up, you will gain next level. So I guess this is more than enough to destroy me. Yeah, it's hard, but they can do it. We died, finally. As you can see, this is no problem. We get instant, like, 3 second cooldown, respawn, and that's it. And all monsters that we defeated until this place will be defeated. So that's like coolest part. You can uh, kinda can step by step clear areas and you don't need to like defeat all monsters at once. You can defeat few monsters and then just rinse and repeat, try one more time and finally get through the stages. Now we get level 2 and you will get more abilities. They will be on your hotbar most of the time if you not like made it like me with all abilities over here. But right now don't worry and just go straight to the town. Right now there's only one way to go, but this step-by-step -step guide will show you where to go to complete campaign fast and what to do, how to complete each quest to get to the end game fast. So now we're in a burning forest area and we're going straight down the road until we met this big wicking dude. We'll help him defeat these bird guys. And now we can talk with him, he's our, like, a lie on our campaign. So we speak dialects, skip dialects, and now we unlocked our traversal skill. Most of the classes will unlock it right now. It will be teleport for sorcerer, mage, some jump for primalist and other stuff. So that's why I picked rogue. It's super fast to go through the map with rogue. And basically right now, instead of uh, trying to attack all monsters, this is the place where we need to go, this pointer over here, and I will just uh, skip all fights. So instead of fighting with them, we're just using travel skill and going straight. At this point we already got some potions, so it should be really safe to do so. And even by doing so, sometimes some monsters will be like killed by other monsters, we will gain some experience. But mostly we don't care, we're just going straight. And finding our first boss already from the start of the game, it's Forge Soldier. He got these basic attacks, you just need to like evade them. This guy will help you a lot because this boss will target him most of the time. But when boss going to you, just go away, escape a little bit if you're not fighter and attack from the distance. It's pretty easy, if you fail you can rinse and repeat. And now we finally go into the top right corner and there is Keeper's Camp. Everywhere where you will see this white fog you can travel through. When you first go into town, you will see these yellow markers, gold markers, that's our quests, and you just want to talk with everyone who got some kind of, of this marker. And we are arriving at the main square of the town. That's where everything we need. So this lady is Respelize Mastery Point Allocation Girl. We don't need her right now. And this lady is our shopkeeper. We can buy some stuff from her or can sell it to her. And there is chest. Uh, chest normally will be shared among all your characters so if you place something here with your main character you can use it with other characters and also there's stash tabs and stash types tabs is basically can be created unlimitedly but they cost gold first tab will cost 1k gold and then it will be more and more and more you can right click them and also i like to like press over here that's a very nice button it will make it from top to bottom view and we can create these categories like as much as we wish but there will be no stash tabs in these categories for now but basically you can right click it pick icon for example armor rename it for armor pick your color and that's it so here will be armor we can create with this plus over here new stash in this type and we will have category armor with stash tab which we can then rename as much as we like in any type. 
So to sell something to trader, you just hover your mouse, press shift and then sell item. All controls over here, just look at it, it's super easy. Also you can press alt to get more information about items. More on that in the forging section, but right now let's just sell everything we don't need. And also your beginner armor over here is so cheap. You can definitely easily like buy everything you want, get better belt, better quiver. So we're getting best equipment and going on to the next square. Where's already this lady and she will give us next quest. So we got our quest and now let's talk about map. Everyone is crazy about this map. Basically you press an M button and that's map. How last epoch works. Basically there's errors and you can travel through them, like traveling through time. Map will be same. So for example, this like lake over here, it will be the same in different eras, but environment will change. And also places where it, you can go. So there's Majelka in ruined era, but you can't go into Majelka, it's already ruined. But in Divine Era, Majelka is totally fine, you can just go and it's like late game over here. And if you just press on wrong button, you like will be in really hard situation, because it's really hard to find where you can go, where you can teleport, what to do right now. And it's easy to fix. You need to make sure you got these quests uh, over here active, if uh, there is no quest in here. You need to press shift, it will hide or show these quests. And now you just press on this stuff. So. I'm pressing on keepers and it will teleport me to this location. I see that Fortress of Guardians got this yellow golden stuff and that's quest location basically. Also we see quest rewards, so after this quest we get some experience gold and passive points. So that's basically how you navigate through the map through the game, you can press on any quest that is active and you see where you need to go. We can't teleport right now right here, but every place that got this star will have teleport location. To teleport fast you just press over here and right click. That's the fastest way to teleport or press travel over here. And when we talk about passives, <laughs> let's go to passives finally. So there is like two buttons over here, it's passives and skills. Let's start with passives. Game gives you full information and basically you're gaining points when you're leveling up and you can spend them here to get some passives. And that's where I actually recommend following some build if you don't know anything or just pick whatever you like. Again, every character will work. If you pick in dodge rating, yeah, you will be clearing enemies slower than if you picked physical damage and attack speed. But who cares, you will still like feel damage increased by your leveling, or your gear, or other stuff. I mean, you will be fine. It's not a big of a deal if you just misplace some points. And this passive works really easily, there's different places where you can pick some points, so we're picking Swift Assassin for example, right now I got one point, and instantly this yellow bar reached one point. When we reach five points in here, we will unlock next skill, Smoke Bomb, 10 points, Decoy, 15 points, Ballista. So that's our like skill point progression, and at the same time, passive point progression. So I can't instantly pick this node Twin Blade to equip swords in both hands. Instead I need to spend at least 5 points in this category and then I can unlock this. So simple straightforward. Also there is another classes like Marksman, Falconer and Blade Dancer, we will unlock them later. So now let's go. Fortress of Gardens. By pressing C button you will see your all information about your character and we see that we are level 3. So this tip will be for beginners especially, if your build is not optimized or you are not sure about your build. Basically you can press M button and you will see that you are in the fortress of gardens. And there will be level of this location. So if you want easier time and have a really like fun powerful character in wall campaign, try to be like 4-5 levels ahead of your zone. To do it, and that's like super cool trick I will show you right now, just after I will explain you about skills. Yeah, that's skills. You press on skill button and here you will see that from level 4 we can specialize in different skills. So let's get to level 4 first. You go into area, there's a lot of mobs in here, let's destroy them, try to fight versus them and basically clear. There's a lot of them and as you can see we're not having really easy time, I need to kite. Finally I'm level 4, <laughs> became a lot powerful and we unlocked skill specialization, let's go in here. So don't worry too much, you can specialize skills later in here. So don't worry too much. How it works basically, you're pressing on this plus button and then picking your skills that you want to specialize in. So let's pick Flurry. And Flurry will have its own 
3 of different passives. Maximum level is 20 and it will level up with you. So just equip skill over here and while you're gaining experience points it will level up. Each level will give you ability to pick one node over here. And this can completely change how the skills works. So Flurry normally shooting like this with like 3 arrows at a time and costing 0 mana. But if we get a few points in alacrity, 3 points exactly to go to the next node, we will unlock boundless bows and now it will be channeled ability so I can press and hold this button and we'll unload like loads of arrows. Coolest part, you don't need to stress too much, you can like pick this node and then oh no I don't want the skill. You can press respect button here and there's two options. Remove skill points or the specialized skill. The specialized skill will basically remove the skill and you can change it for any other skill you like. That's why it's really easy to change your class. Not class, but change your build in last epoch, that's the coolest part. Flurry. Let's go and talk about Flurry a little bit more. So if we pick a skill, we can respect one skill point. So we're removing point and we're removing alacrity. We press and confirm and now we can pick alacrity again. So that's completely free. But when you level up, you won't be able to get all your points back, so you will need to level up the skill again. While you're leveling, you will get like minimum specialized level over here, it's 1 right now. When we will be higher level, it will be like 2, 3, up to 10. So in the end game, you can change your skills and they will be always at least with 10 points. And finally now my bonus tip. So we're level 4 right now, this area is level 3. If you know what you do, probably you're not watching this tutorial, step by step tutorial. And you basically can actually like press tab button or look on minimap and speed run through the campaigns through objectives. But if you like playing this game, trying to kill your monsters and want to have like easier time, so my best advice again to be like few levels ahead of uh, your zone to do it like fastest way. We saw that there's a lot of monsters in here in this area. You just press and teleport. So pressing T button or just pressing over here portal, it will open portal, you can teleport to town. That's completely free and you're in a town. So we can use it to sell some items, sell some gear, place something in our chest. Maybe we want to change passives for some reason, so just talk with this lady in town with this brain icon and now you will pay a little bit to her some gold and she will give you back your points so you can allocate them differently. But normally again you can use teleport to go to town and then instantly teleport back. All monsters will be here but don't worry if you have in lux you have bad PC or some like other stuff they won't attack you when you just like arrived over here. Only when you attack or move they will aggro and they will start fighting versus you. So that's basically how you can fight same pack of mobs maybe even strong mobs that gives you nice amount of XP and just stay in one place and level up a little bit. But still areas is really big so we can just freely roam around it. So in this area we're going to the top left clearing all monsters, we want a little bit of experience to clear later stages faster. And if you're in danger in the end of the zone, like best uh, strategy you can do actually is to just find exit and exit. This will tra transport us to fortress of walls. And yeah, most of the map is really easy, you can go only into one way or another, but here is first crossroads. So fortress of all, there is this star icon in the middle, so we can unlock teleporting here, and there's two exits, keeper's vault and store rooms. Or we can go backwards to fortress gardens. And most of the time they're like pretty explanatory where you want to go. So if you got quest location in the northern road, you can see on the map, that northern zone to the like top right of fortress walls. So you just go to the top right of this like location and you will eventually be in the right place. Here on walls just go forward, destroy these guys, but again don't worry too much. When you die you don't go to town, <laughs> it's the uh, coolest part, you will just teleport back here and can continue from this zone. I like this part of this game. And we're level 5, so I got my puncture, my favorite skill to go through this place and also I leveled up my flurry. Sadly I'm respecting the skill right now, the specialized skill and getting my puncture over here. So for early game with puncture I like this tree over here, I'm going to the right, top and then over here to shatter. You will get cool armor shred effect and this will increase like damage really like insanely. And while you're feeling like pretty okay right now with some occasional like bows and swords dropping, 
this will become more crazy very very soon so another stuff i want to talk about is loot filter you just press shift plus f button and you will get to loot filter location you can create filter by yourself but that's pretty hard if you don't know a lot about the game so in the early game you want to have more weapons and armors on yourself in the later game you don't need like trash stuff and you want to only best that's why there's two types of loot filters leveling that will give, like get you to level 60 70 and late game filter for full build i got all of them in my google docs so make sure to check it in the description and basically use them like this so that's the file over here it's leveling items filters in the left side so for example right now i want to level up my blade dancer i want to see a lot of loot flow blade dancer I'm just pressing on this Blade Dancer TXT file and opening it. So you just download this file or open it in Google Doc and press Ctrl A and Ctrl C to copy everything. Then in the game press create filter and past clipboard contents. That's it. So you can rename it Blade Dancer leveling for example. Pick like icon. For example I like this icon because I'm deleting these levels and this loot filters later. And that's it, that's full loot filter, it got 18 rules right now, but late game filters is a lot more dense, with like 50 plus rules most of the time. You can change the description, <laughs> right now it's my YouTube page and also credits, because for leveling I'm just using max level leveling item filters, they're pretty good, so why not to have it. And we're going into our first enemy, which we need to focus down and face Sola. So just use all your skills and destroy this the burning sky oh i died this was done completely for fun and yeah as you can see for my build i don't need this sword so i can't even pick up it but if you see something on the ground and want to pick up just press x button it will highlight and you can pick up these items so why i died <laughs> just to show you that this boss will still have 50 percent hp and basically even if you're like playing a little bit bad not on hardcore you can just you know <laughs> do some silly stuff loose and still defeat your bosses later and here we are we see teleport location but right now it's grayed out that's why you want to always get to the teleport to activate it so that's where you learn you just go to teleport it's lighting up now we can teleport over here instantly go to the top right and get this bonus quest just talk with him let's destroy guards and that's our quest line progression so we can go to the main quest to the top right or we got top left our bonus quest blue icon not gold one so how to understand do you need to do it or not again you go into the map pressing on your quests and seeing rewards for a total, when you finish in campaign, you can unlock 15 passive points and 8 idle slot rewards. So, look on the rewards and see if there is passive point or idle slot reward, definitely do this quest. If there is only experience and gold, you can ignore it. So this quest will give me passive points, I'm definitely doing it. And we're going to the top left, then we're jumping through the here to story rooms. And in story rooms, we're basically doing clockwise rotation. And that's why I like puncture. There's a lot of this like choke points so, and we're splashing up on all enemies with this skill. And after clockwise rotation, we're facing boss that we saw already. So we know what to do. Just away these attacks and shoot him down. Now we're facing him solo, so it will be a little bit trickier. But still, he's really slow and fun to play with. When you will find some items, to quickly identify them, you can just hover mouse and see if there is any additional bonuses. So we got more armor and more resistance, so we're definitely picking it. But mostly in the early game, you're looking only on damage to just clear everything faster. And also to always compare items, because it will be like a little bit different in your game at first. You need to go to options menu, so escape, settings, gameplay, and then hover down over here to the bottom part. And that's a tick bar over here, auto compare items. So check this, and you will have this auto comparison always. If you like it, of course. And that's where you need to just come close to this armor to complete this quest. That's it. Quest is basically completed, we're running away. And this guy will be teleported over here, we talk with him, and here we are, additional passive point, for free. That's a nice one. Let's defeat this big bro, and go to the top right location for our main quest, of course. 
we see lady we talk with her and let's go in but before we go in let's spend our passive points so we've got two from quest and from our leveling and leveling our skill puncture so as you can see i need two points for this connection to go to the redouble and i'm getting one point here then getting point in redouble when I get more points and after one point in redouble I'm getting shatter to increase armor shot chance and effect. That's my early game build for a rogue, but honestly everything will work. So about inventory. It can be really tedious if you just try to locate everything over here, you know, organize. And also there's stuff like some shards, what to do with them. You can do with them a lot of stuff later. And that's like classic beginner mistake. You're going and placing the shards in your chest. Don't do it. Instead, there's lighting up button over here, transfer materials. And shards is materials for crafting. There's three materials, more on this later. But basically, you just press this button and it will be transferred to your forging materials. You don't need extra stash or other stuff for it. No, you just can press over here, sort items, and it will auto sort for you. That's like quality of life changes. So we are right over here, extra point, super cool. And in Keeper's Vault we go into the left part and going clockwise, skipping all guards, we don't need them. Basically I like to just, you know, run around and shoot behind me, so I kill at least some, like, guys on the way. There's boss, so we definitely need to kill some guys. Let's do it! A beautiful fight! Oh my goodness, bro. So honestly you don't even need to, <laughs> to defeat these guys, but again, having a little bit of levels is really good if you want to have chill time in campaign. And also they drop some stuff sometime. So this door will be opened now and we can go through. Now we need to talk with the skipper. Just skip this dialogue and he will be ambushed. Again, no panic, just destroy everyone and that's it. He will fight with us, so we're fine, but don't run away. We definitely need to help him. And after clearing this mess, Burst Blade Polaris will arrive. A little boss, but again, it's easy to fight versus bosses when you got teammates. After finishing boss, talk with this dude and go to the top left. Then to the top right and you will face wall, so we're turning left and going topwards. And here you will probably find one of your first statues. So, statues is like passive stuff, you can hover mouse and see effects. It will increase movement, attack and casting speed. You just press on it and you will get this buff for short duration. Also, health potions, while you're at full potions, you don't need to use them, you just go over these health potions and they will be used automatically. So don't worry if you're not ever pressing on potions, if your potions are full, you just don't need to press ever at them, you can go over potions that is dropped and they will be automatically consumed. My go-to strategy in campaign, basically I'm running around and when I get this pack of enemies, I turn around and just shoot them down with some area of effect skills. So don't shoot packs one by one if you're like feeling strong, instead uh, let them come together and then just turn back and destroy them. And we are in the northern road. And that's easy part, you're just going in, activating this teleport location and then say goodbye to this bro. This quest is ended, let's talk with this lady. And now we need to get back to town. You can do it on foot to level up if you wish or you can press on M button and again just left and right click to keepers camp that's it you you can do it by like pressing on the circles of teleport but why to do it if you can just press m button but also there's some secrets kind of secrets you can go to the top left over here and then to the like that end and there will be chest so as you can see there's a little bit of light on it there's no other indications not on map not like anywhere and there's a lot of chests in this game like this so just press on it, it will be opened and there's some nice loot most of the time. And also a rune of shattering. So let's get back to town. So in town we can finish our side quests easily or just get new ones. But mainly we're finishing our main quest. And now instead of left door we're going to the right. Easy and straightforward. And Highlands basically first part where you can <laughs> skip the quest. Because missing in the Highlands will reward only experience and gold, that's it. Well, your next quest, the shard, locates in the far away location. Right now you should be already be around level 8, that's where you get new skill specialization. And I recommend getting traversal skill. So in specialization you get main damaging ability and also ability that you will be using for traveling. 
and make sure to get some nodes that will reduce cooldown every ability got something like this it's velocity in our shift ability cooldown will be a lot lower and we can use this traversal skill a lot more often so if you're not sure where to go again it's a really fast way to understand just press tab button and you will see this big map and you will see where is teleport location you will arrive at war camp and you can just travel through this location if you're pretty like feeling that you're strong enough but again, like best way and best strategy to go through is to just stack some enemies and then turn around and delete them. And we finally arrive at the summit. That's where we meet our first real big boss. This bird guy. He's looking cool, but who cares, let's wait until he arrives and destroy this boy. Make sure to await his attacks and attack when you're safe. And when he's finished, you will get some loot can go further and unlock our friend. Talk with this old man and then back to the keeper's camp. Now finish your quests, but also check trader from time to time and in the early game I recommend finding some good pair of boots that give you some nice movement speed and also two rings, scholar, silver, ring. So basically silver ring will give you more movement speed and now you will travel faster and this means you will beat campaign faster. So always get these rings. After small talk with this old man in the middle of this camp, we're going to teleport. And we are in the ruined future, chapter 2. There's a total of 9 chapters that we need to go through to finish campaign. Let's talk with this dude and go. And maps at this point of the game is mostly like straightforward. You don't need to turn anywhere, just go forward. Talk with this guard and basically talk with everyone you see on your journey. And we are arriving to refugee part, getting our quest and traveling to the next location. Last refugee outskirts. Talk with the guard, go forward, get side quest, make sure to do it. And this side quest got different locations. I recommend going to the bottom right first. So that's our first crossroad of the game where you can pick best location. So going to the bottom right will be fastest way over here. And all you need to do to finish this quest Evacuation is to just speak with this dude. He escaped. Also, you will find some closed bridges over here. You just need to press on this lever and bridge will be opened. So we went to the bottom right. Now to the top left from bottom right. Now we can save this knight over here. And now going to the top. To save this lady, we need to destroy some crates. Talk with her and I mean this dude. It's not lady. And also this chest. Don't miss it. You can find some nice loot over here. And now for some reason I don't have location where to go. So again, if you kinda don't know where to go, just open map and see. Next location in the top right. So just move to the top right and you will see exit eventually. That's how not to get lost in the last epoch. Save this old man from assault and go to the next door. And you will be in council chambers, refugee camp, something like this. There will be a lot of extra quests in here. And now it's important part of the game. Get all quests, get your passive points, get your experience. And this guy whose name is Erza. You want to accept his quest, get your main quest from this old man. Just skip the dialogue and go next. So after you talk with this man, you will unlock idle slots for this quest. And you can pick few idols. What is idol system? Again, game explains everything, but there's only one important stuff you need to know. You need to unlock these idol slots to use them. How to unlock them? Beat the campaign. Easy. That's why it's really important to actually finish campaign first and then just start grinding for your endgame content. Idols uh, are really different. They can, can like occupy different slots. One, two, three, four slots in different directions. They won't make a big difference right now with just one or two idols, so don't bother too much, just equip any idol that you like, maybe you get some nice stats on them, and go on. And we're going on to the really important part. We have two quests taken, we're going in our the last archive part of the map, going forward and then turning to the right, and here you will see door, Erza library, go inside, and instantly turn right, finish mobs and then turn left go to the dead end and there will be a ledger over here interact with it you can instantly take the ledger and your quest is done now get out of this library and 
well we can go back uh, instead go to the right side and just fast forward to the next location eventually you will meet this door over here and will travel to opinion's study we can say hello to this dude but be ready to fight there will be three really scary guys you need to defeat them and after this fight get a loot and just press m button go back to the chambers now first of all we need to decide one stuff what to do with our as a ledger so if you read through the ledger you will be able to give this ledger to erza or to this gambler and they will give you different rewards make sure to pick uh, the one you like gambler will give you amulet that give you 100 critical strike chance but then you won't crit again so it's like a weird amulet instead i always like to pick erza and get his reward so passive point and also gloves gloves is pretty nice every gloves it gives you armor mana but also it gives you leech leech is life steal basically so you got pretty nice way to life steal with every skill ability or whatever you use also gambler gambler is not useful in the beginning because uh, his items is really like costly but stuff i recommend getting from him is uh, rings he basically got every type of weapon armor you need most of the time and when you buy it it will be rolled and you will get some type of item so i got yellow it's better than blue we definitely equip it progression goes like this we go with gray item into blue into yellow into purple and then we got unix which is kind of brown orange also there's green set items and unix can be legendary and they will be red but you need to do them yourself so let's talk with the old man get one more passive point and he tell us to stop the bad boy we're going to precipice let's go precipice is my favorite location and if you watch closely over here you see this white fork or something like this so that's what i told you about you won't get any notification on map and right now you don't even see it so you can definitely miss this part but there's a lot of parts like this in the game and you just need to press here and you will be teleported instantly to some locations especially in the later parts of the game there's a lot of like places where you can go in and i actually stuck in one place in Majelka. i wasn't able like i didn't know what to do basically i didn't know what to do and I should press on this white fog to teleport that's it here you will see like a few chests you can pick something and that's cool not to miss the stuff but here we will just skip everything and go to the next part of the quest you will see this idol of ruin really big boss need to kill him to go through nice looking worm but still it's easy to kill him he's standing in one place this will open up ancient cavern and that's actually a game mechanics you just press on it and kind of teleport through the time and that's really fun mechanic so how it works basically we teleported from ruined era into ancient era and we are on the same map in the same place but in this ruined era terrain is different and we just continue our journey down the road against these dinosaurs eventually you will see teleport location and also another ruined era time warp or whatever it is so go in and now you're here so what to do now and where to go now actually it's like doesn't matter you need to go to armory there's two entrances to armory you can go to any of them fastest will be in the bottom right so just few seconds later we are in the armory here we will need to fight hordes of enemies because we can't go through this door otherwise but when we defeat all hordes of enemies the boss will arrive, defeat this void fused forge and after he is defeated you will be able to go here and now you unlock crafting actually I can do it even before but that's the first place where you will see forge get quest from this dude and here is the forge so some new players think they need to like find forge in a camp in a city and press on it to use it actually no you can be anywhere on the map like completely anywhere even like in the boss fight and you just need to press f button f button will unlock forge so let's transfer all materials and let me explain how forge works it will be quickest and most simple explanation how forge works this middle big slot is slot for your weapon armor or any other gear for example our bow so that's our bow 
This bow is blue, this bow is yellow. Why? Because yellow bow got three bonuses, blue bow got only two bonuses. Every weapon, armor and other type of gear got strict bonuses applied to this type of gear. For example, short bow will always have bow damage. But birch bow will always have bow damage and critical strike chance. Other bows got different base stats. Also, we see that every weapon and gear type got forging potential. And you will see it always over here. Forging potential 13 right now on this bow. The better gear you have, more forging potential it will have. So purple gear will have maximum forge potential possible. Does this mean that unique items will have big forge potential? No. You can't use forge on unique and set items. As you can see, forging potential is zero. So how it works? You don't need to stress about forging at all. You can't break it. But hey, definitely you can. So there's only one mistake you can do if you're doing forge. And this mistake will be over here, this button. It will apply a runes. And this first rune, rune of shattering. If this rune right now applied to your weapon, to your armor, and you will press on shatter, it will destroy your weapon and you will get some shards. Shards is your like forging materials, basically. So if you want to get forging materials from your weapons and items, just use your rune of shatter and it will randomly give you some of these affixes and suffixes. I call them bonuses, but they called prefix and suffix. Suffix on the right, prefix on the left. In the weapon description, prefix will be on top, suffix on bottom, and you will see these arrows. So arrows from the left is prefix, right arrows is suffix, and mostly suffixes will be protective stuff, prefixes offensive stuff. So how we use in Forge actually how to do it? Cool part, we don't roll or do some random stuff. We actually can pick what we want. Especially if weapon got some free slots. This bow got this free slot, so we can press here. And that's prefix, let's press on prefixes. We don't have any prefixes shards right now. So let's demonstrate on suffixes. Here we see this plus button and basically that. Let's pick our suffix. And I got increased stun chance or chance to slow on hit. Pick whatever you like, add it to your gear, and this will occupy this slot. Before you use in forge, you can press on glyph button over here. So glyphs affects how this process will go. You can use glyph of hope to modify outcome of craft, granting it 25% chance to have forging potential cost reduced to zero. That's very useful on some items that you don't want to reduce forging potential. And I guess it's time to like understand how it works. Every time you're doing something with your forge, there's a chance like to reduce forging potential. And you will see it over here in the bottom part. So applying this affix will cost from 1 to 18 forging potential. Let's apply it. And we got success, critical success. So critical success is insane stuff. Normally you're getting T1 when you add in any type of suffix or affix. And if you got multiple of them, you can level up and upgrade this stuff. So if you got multiple shards of health on kill, you can basically upgrade gear like this. It will cost forging potential. But also cool part about critical success is that it won't use your affix shard. So now we will demonstrate you how you can level up this stuff. Again, using Glyph of Hope and we will upgrade affix right now again. It will cost from 1 to 12 forging potential. Let's do it. Now it's T3 as you can see. And we got reduced forging potential, we got only 18 left. So what does it mean? Treat it as item health. When this number will reach zero, and it can't go below zero, so if it's like at least one, and cost will be from one to 18, it won't break, there will like no bad stuff happening. It will just reach zero anyway. And after reaching zero, you won't be able to use forge anymore. Also, cool part that Forge is kind of additional item slot, so you can like press F anytime you wish and <laughs> don't forget to get your weapon back. But if you want to free some slots in your inventory, just put something into Forge. And this goes like kind of additional slot. And that's basically Forge basics. Let's finish this part of campaign first. And I will give you exact recipe how to make best items every time in a few minutes. So here we're going to the top right, but stick to the right wall. Because you want to get to this bonus quest over here, save this bro, unlock this bridge, because you can't unlock it from different location. Oh no, you can. 
I guess before this lever was like there was no lever on this side. But here we are, the lower district, where we will find this bro who's like tied to a tree or some roots, whatever. He asks to stay back, but we need to destroy him. This fight is not really hard and you will eventually finish him. And after he's done, you just pick up the shirt and go to unknown location through the time. End of the time, this location will be very familiar to you soon. We got Forge over here, but we don't care about it. We got this lady who can change our skills in the bottom left. Also, our chest, trader and gambler. But here you want to take quest from Forgotten Knight. And now you may be like frustrated where to go, how to finish quest, maybe game bugged. No, you just need to go to the like top left over here near the gambler. It's kind of stairs, go up and meet this old man again. Now you will make most important choice in your journey. Choose your mastery. So mastery, why it's so important? Because when you choose your mastery, you can't change it. You can respect your skills, you can respect your passives, but mastery will be chosen forever. And mastery got some passive bonuses that kinda dictates how you will play it. So if you're going with Blade Dancer, you will get more shadows, so it's kinda no-brainer to play with some skills that use in shadows. Also you will be gaining more melee physical damage, so get melee weapons. And also dodge rating, improved dodge rating means your main defensive stat will be dodge and you need to scale it. If you're going with Marksman, it will be 50% increased damage with a bow and using a bow will give you more attack speed. Falconer will get more dexterity, so pick wisely, but also make sure to understand what you're picking right now. That's why I got builds for every class on my channel and in the beginning of these videos you will always see gameplay of this class, of some of the like basic and pretty good builds. So you can decide what class to choose, if you don't know. Today I'm making Blade Dancer, but also I want to check a little bit of Marksman. I want to experiment with some builds, so let's pick Marksman. It doesn't matter for me, but for you it will be a really big choice, because I get like a lot of other characters. And here you'll see this prompt, I assure, choosing Master class is final and cannot be undone or changed. So if you like pick wrong Master right now, you need to redo wall campaign again to this point with the new character. But this character will be Marksman forever. You will instantly unlock one skill from your Marksman class. And now after talking with this bro, you can get your passive point and return to chambers. Get new main quests, finish some additional quests. And also don't forget to talk with this brain day lady to get additional quest. She got it too. And also with this lady. So going to the bottom right, unlocking this sigil or whatever it is, rune door. And we can go to sheltered wood. But before we go into the sheltered wood, let's go to passives again. Now we got marksman tree, which we can fill all nodes from left to right and get a lot of points in here. This will unlock our skills again at level 5, 15 and 30 in this tree after we spent 30 points. That's a lot of skills in here, you can make a lot of different builds, but you can't instantly go and spend slots, spend points in marksman tree. Instead you need to go to rogue and get at least 20 points here. So after you get 20 points in here, you can start leveling Marksman. But even if you choose Marksman, you're not limited only to Marksman skills. So if you want to mess around, you can actually level up these nodes in Falconer and Blind Dancer too. But they will be locked to, to the middle part, so you can get last skill of the like Blade Dancer or Falconer. Some skills will be locked in the bottom part and also some nodes will be locked. And also you will never get Mastery skill. So master skill is locked. That's mostly like useless inf information, but when you finish your build, maybe at level like 70, you can get notes like Cloak of Shadows or other notes from other classes that gives you basic points like Dexterity, it's really powerful stuff. So now a little bit about scaling in this game and a lot of players actually confused like what gear to choose, you know, what bow to pick. It's super easy. You need to understand what is your main damaging ability. For like each build there is most of the time one or two damaging abilities. If you got four different abilities your build is bad most of the time. And just focus on this ability. So for me it's puncture. So we're going to puncture over here and we're hovering mouse. We can press alt button to 
get more information, and we see scaling tags. So, this ability puncture scales with physical damage, melee damage, bow attack and dexterity. But it won't scale with melee damage for us, because puncture can be used with melee weapon or range weapon. So, for us it scales with physical, bow attack and dexterity. This means when you're looking for gear, just look for any gear that gives you more physical damage, more bow damage or more dexterity to do more damage. And some basic stuff, if you're doing a lot of attacks, then attack speed will be your like start of choice always. Also you can scale with critical strike chance and critical strike multiplier. And that's it basically, that's everything you need to know about damage in this game and how to scale. What about armor? It's even easier. What you're looking for, you're looking for resistances, you want to cap them at 75% because reduced damage of resistances will be capped at 75% and enemies penetrate 1% of resistance per area level up to 75%. This means if you got zero resistance at the high levels enemies will do 75% more damage to you. If you got resistance they will do. Also make sure to get some health and percentage health is most valuable effects you can get. Some endurance is also nice and it's very good to increase endurance threshold. Endurance reducing damage dealt to you below your endurance threshold. And that's why in the beginning area at the start of this video basic crops wouldn't able to destroy me. I got more health regen normally than they doing damage against my endurance. And I will put all basic damage, like defensive stats right now on the screen, what to look for when you go into the later stages of the game. It's simple, it's always the same, but basically with all this information you're already ready to take down this game. Let's go back to Forge. So, how to use Forge to get most potential from your weapons and armor. I got bow in here. This bow is not super cool, but got nice stats. So let me drop it to the forge. As you can see it got T6, critical strike chance and bow attack speed. You can level up affixes up to T5, but tier 6 is locked to drop only. So you need to grind and get these bows as much as possible. And finally find this good, really strong affix on it. Now when you like this bow, you can level it up. So, coolest part, you can modify different stuff in different ways. For example, bow physical damage. If I just press here, it will create and pick affix shard. And there's two things to think, to think about. Forging potential right now pretty big, so I'm completely free to just lose a little bit of forging potential. And if I don't have anything to do, I will use Glyph of Hope, just to be able to keep this forging potential. But this bow physical damage, let's check this out. We hover over the bow and pressing Alt button. Now we see not only tiers, but also ranges in which we can roll these affixes. So bow physical damage right now is plus 8 and it's tier 2. It can be rolled from 7 to 9. This means it's like middle tier. Let's upgrade it to T3. After upgrading, it's tier 3 right now and it's plus 12. So it's maximum possible physical damage roll. If I want to upgrade bow physical damage more, instead of uh, doing normal upgrades, I can use in not Glyph of Hope, but Glyph of Order. This will prevent the roll of this affix. So now it's basically rolled to the maximum and we just upgrade in it. So it's rolled to 15 for some reason. It should like be locked to 16. Still, that's fine. What else can we do? We can use Glyph of Chaos or Glyph of Despair. And there's two ideations how you can use it. Always make sure to use it before you upgrade to T5, because next upgrade will be T5 for me. So Glyph of Chaos will randomly change upgraded affix to a different one. So do I want bow physical damage? Yes, I want bow physical damage. That's why, if we still got pretty nice forging potential, instead of using Glyph of Hope, to maybe maintain this potential, use Glyph of Despair. It's a rare Glyph, but very useful. Now we have a chance to seal Affix. What does it mean? Let's try it. And it's sealed. So now if we hover over the bow, we will get this bow physical damage sealed on this bow, but we get free slot. So that's how you make super broken purple items, basically. Now we can use prefixes. We get completely free slot and we can't use one more bow damage or we can actually can 
and we can add even more affixes so we can like have three prefixes or suffixes or even more if you're really lucky but it won't happen too much so this bow is awesome what can we do more we can change this stuff i don't like chance to bleed on hit so that's how glyph of chaos works we're using it on this roll and now we will upgrade it to t3 tier 3 but it won't be changed to bleed chance to bleed on hit instead it became chance to chill on hit we can try it even more time if we got this affix shards so we can try it one more time and maybe we will get like other affixes or suffixes and also don't forget we got a lot of runes over here runes of shatter it will basically like shatter this bow and possibly get this stuff to our forge we got rune of refinement and rune of refinement is really useful if you got a really good item and you press an alt on it and you see that all rolls is pretty low so my rolls is really high right now we can roll critical strike from 7 to 8 and we get 8 attack speed from 19 to 23 we got 23 and other stuff pretty high too so that's not really useful but if your affix is rolled really low you can use rune of refinement and try to refine this item to make it more strong also if you're not sure like how good your like weapon is or it's really good but you want to change one slot and you kind of want to gamble a little bit you want to use this rune of removal after you use it it will randomly remove one of these affixes of course every action will cost forging potential so keep this in mind and this will free up slots so you can use different affixes also another cool stuff is rune of discovery if you got some basic items even white one you can just use this rune on these items and it will give affixes to all spots that's actually a way how you can get a lot of affixes when you got some gold so get some basic items from traders use this rune rune of discovery this will add affixes and now use rune of shatter and get all these affixes back to you also there's a rune rune of shaping it will reroll all implicts and implicts is that stuff on top so we got this wand over here spell necrotic damage can be from 56 to 66 and we can reroll this all of the implicts on top another really useful rune but it's really rare rune of sentence so rune of a sentence changes item into unique or set item of the same type for example you're looking for marina's lost soul wand and it's late game wand that you possibly will find in the later stages of the game but you may actually find any wand just normal wand basic one don't even use yellow just gray wand and use this rune of ascendance you will press ascend and there's chance to get this marina's lost soul wand instead i got this alchemist ladle with legendary potential so pretty fun stuff how to make any normal item into a set or unique item and also this fun rune rune of creation and rune of creation is really really rare too it duplicates item but reduces the forging potential to zero so when to use it when you got really cool item and most of the time it will be something like a ring i would say ring is the best like example to use it basically you got this cool item and it got some forging potential left but all affixes and prefixes suffixes is already at maximum so t5 t6 t7 whatever you can use this rune of creation and just duplicate this item so now we got this ring in our inventory and this in the forge and that's really powerful ring for me so with my normal combination i got 8k damage on this skill now this ring will give me 700 more damage and i just duplicated it stats is really amazing so that's basically forge also there's a rune of research it seals experimental affix you will see experimental affixes on your gear and gear will be highlighted in two colors it will be like half blue half yellow this means it got experimental affix and experimental affixes affects your skills mostly so you can directly seal the suffix to gear and make it really good so you're right now in council chambers and you need to go to the right side and finish some quests and finish campaign but instead you can go to the end of time and teleport over here to the end of time teleport location and you will be here basically you will be here every time you rejoin the game what to do over here you can go to the monolith of fate and probably it will be hard for you if you're not playing some optimized build but that's our end game system 
In Monolith of Fate, you're facing randomly generated like mini levels with some tasks, and there's a lot of them. You're clearing them, then defeating boss and doing it again and again and again, just to get best gear and other stuff. There's a lot of guides for this place, but basically, you need to clear each island. Each island will have more and more level required. Not required, but more level, so it will be harder. Enemies will be more stronger. And this islands on the right side and on the left after you finish first island. To finish island you just speak with this pylon or whatever it is and start your way outwards. After finishing each quest you will get some rewards and you will feel this line. Get this line more and more and more and you will unlock quests. The further you from the center the more you will fill the line and after finishing these quests there will be two quests and a boss. You will be able to choose your prophecy or blessing yeah blessing so blessing will give you some kind of bonus and it will be just forever with you on the le left side there's drop rate bonuses so if you're looking for gear that's where to go but to clear this uh, monoliths it's better to get more powerful that's why going to the right side you will get very nice bonuses that will give you more power for example here i got chance to shed white resistance of enemies and when you're going to the top side, there's last island over here. It looks like this. And you want to clear all level 90 islands around it. After you clear all these islands, you're going to this middle island and you can interact with it. And that's where grind begins. Timelines empowered. Now all timelines can be level 100. You will get more cool bonuses. And now basically grind, rinse and repeat. You will be able to choose your timeline and also there will be a lot of exclusive echo rewards for this timeline. And you will see over here, so in this timeline you will have more chances to get some bows, daggers, maces, axes and polar arms. No bows over here, by the way, yeah, just sword, axes, maces. And while you definitely can clear this monoliths, instead I recommend first of all clearing campaign. Because after you clear campaign you can get to your guild. And there's traders guild that will give you ability to trade with other players. But also there's circle of fortune. And you definitely want to join circle of fortune camp. If you want to be insanely powerful like this. Because circle of fortune will give you access to the best gear. And you can be as powerful as this awesome warlock. So if you wanna get drops like this every time. Make sure to watch video on the screen right now, it will explain everything about Circle of Fortune. And if you want good build, just watch my channel, subscribe, and there's a lot of cool builds for last epoch. See you in the next videos.